Welcome, it is Wednesday, June the 24th, and today is the feast day of St. John the Baptist. It's interesting, this is the only saint in the liturgical calendar um, that has a vigil. We have vigils for Mary, we have vigils for, for celebrations having to do with the person of Jesus and the Pentecost, but um, there's no vigil for a specific saint other than John the Baptist. Uh, except for the two saints, Peter and Paul. On their 29th, they also have a vigil. Very rare that you'd have a vigil of a saint. So it means in the saint is very important to the church. And it's interesting, of course, in these saints who are very important to the church, they're all martyrs. So it says something about yeah. martyrdom and the witness that is given by these individuals and something important about ourselves and how um, w we should be living um, um, as martyrs because we should be living out the faith no matter what would come our way. So let us remember John the Baptist today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joy and direct the hearts of all of the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be looking um, not at the Gospel of Matthew, but because it is a solemnity, we're looking at the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 57 to 66, and also verse 80. <clears throat> now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, Not so. He shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by that name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about through the hill country of Judea. And all who heard laid them in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, even though we have two people who are sinful, we find that um, God acts in their life in the blessing of giving them a child at their old age. A and yet, um, old age would have been as um, late as 50. Um, I know a woman in one of my parishes who had a child at 50. Actually, the day after she gave birth, she turned 50. So it's possible. But God works a miracle in order to bring about the wonderful gift of a herald, one who would herald um, the coming of the Lord and did it with such energy and such commitment and um, really um, 
had about him an air that brought people from all over the Mediterranean basin to see him, to hear him. They were coming from Egypt and they were coming from Mesopotamia. They were coming from Rome to listen to this man called John. And so he was making a tremendous proclamation, not proclaiming um, that the Lord was going to come, but proclaiming the reality, change your lives. Change your li- and maybe the reality was in the process of changing their lives, they would become open to being able to listen to the Lord. So his, his words uh, were words um, that um, were changing people's lives all over the known world at the time. And they became listeners. And also many people, because of listening, became doers. They, too, took up fasting. They um, asked to be forgiven of their sins. They became open to the presence uh, more of God in their life, which then would bring them to a point of um, being open to um, the person of Jesus when he came. Um, But I'd have to say, um, let's look at St. Peter. Would Peter have been alive at John the Baptist? Maybe as a child. Yeah. He, I mean, age-wise, he may have been a little bit older than, um, or, yeah, maybe a little. Depending how old Peter was at the time of Jesus, if he's contemporary to Jesus, then he'd be contemporary to John, and maybe they're all in different parts of Palestine, all being born, all growing up, and that would be the earliest community. And one thing that Monsignor's making us think of, I think, is think of the community coming together, the birth of John, then Peter, and and the other disciples being born in Palestine, in this occupied land, in a very precarious moment in time, a very difficult time for the people. And yet John comes and has a message that is going to let people know that there is going to be something so wonderful that he is willing to die for it. And he will be the one, John, who pays the price for his witnessing to Jesus. He winds up being arrested by the um, government and then executed by the king over a situation similar to Thomas More, with a king and a queen and a dynamic there over a bad relationship. John is another witness with his blood, as was Oscar Romero. We're seeing a real confluence of, of feast days, personalities, all coming together in our feasts this month. Yes, and it seems that the same reality is being told to us over and over and over again, um, not to be afraid to give witness. And that idea of, um, you know, what happens during our time too. We've had saints come to into the world that have made such a difference for for us, um, and um, one of them uh, would be Faustina, as she's given us the gift of mercy, and um, so um, you know it's almost as if God has a great great plan, and He is in the process of bringing the reality of the plan together, and so um, you and I ha- have been prepared um, from the time of Faustina to. Um, the beginning of next year for this whole year of mercy, um, reading her um, uh, her words um, coming to us from the person of Jesus. So we have all of this coming at us um, again and again and again. And I wonder why. What season do we find ourselves in? What situation in the world do we find ourselves in? Is God readying us to be prepared to take on the call to be proclaimers and liver, living the gospel so that we might change the world that we live in? It could be that this process is to change the world. Come back tomorrow. <laughs>